Um, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Aideen McCole. I'm the new head of multidisciplinary arts. I'm joined by my brilliant colleague, Muren Walsh, who's the multidisciplinary arts officer. Um, we are looking after, we're tasked with looking after quite a new area for the Arts Council. And that means a whole lot of figuring out as to what we mean by multidisciplinary arts and how we think we can support it um, properly and sensibly within the context of the Arts Council and in the context of what the arts sector needs. At the same time, we look after a number of non-discipline specific schemes. So if, if it's your area of interest, we'll have an info clinic on the Markovich Award next month because um, that's one of ours. But right now we're taking a look at the touring of work scheme. Um, we're going to go through a number of slides that will hopefully explain to you the what, how and why of the touring scheme. Um, and we'll have time for questions at the end. So please do type in or raise your hand or shout out any questions that you have. And I encourage everyone to have a listen in on those because you might discover your question is someone else's as well. Um, just to be aware, we are recording today's uh, webinar so that we can make it available after the fact for anyone who hasn't been able to join us today. The Q&A section will not be included, so do feel free to uh, participate actively in that. And then in terms of a kind of a help in terms of accessibility, you'll notice that there is the option to show closed captions at the bottom of your Zoom window. So if that's something that helps you, uh, please do make the most of it. Um, the first thing I want to explain is the fact that this is one of two rounds of touring that we will offer. Um, my apologies, first of all, I'm aware that it is really not very helpful to have opened up round one without giving you the full details of round two. That's my fault. That's me being new, flapping about a lot, trying to figure out what I'm doing uh, with varying levels of success. Um, so that's a thing that I've been uh, I've been struggling a little with to figure out. Um, so right now we have round one open, which is to fund tours that would happen between January and December 2025. Round two will be a second opportunity to fund a tour that would happen in the latter half of 2025. Or you could use that opportunity to apply for a tour that happens in 2026. So if you're someone who is in a position to plan that bit further in advance and line things up further in advance, that might be a good opportunity for you. And then the detail that I am still working on finalizing and will do so very, very soon is the opening and closing date. And it looks as though we will open it in December and close it in February. So a slightly longer window to account for the fact that there's a Christmas break in that period. Um, so I wanted to head that off, first of all, and let you know that I will have that finalized very, very soon. And as soon as I do, it will be available on our website, available on socials and so on, so that you'll be informed as soon as it's figured out, you will be informed. Um, and thank you for your patience with regards to that. And I do I do appreciate that it's really not it's not ideal that it, it hasn't been figured out until now. And I promise I will be better next year. Um, so with that in mind, let's talk about round one. Um, so the objectives and the priorities of the scheme, the purpose of the touring of work scheme is to enable individual artists and organisations to tour the presentation of work in the Republic of Ireland at some point in 2025. We want to make great art of lots of different kinds, lots of different art forms, lots of different formats available to lots of different people in lots of different places around Ireland. So when we assess the touring scheme. We are, of course, looking for brilliant work, but at the same time, we want to fund a range of tours that bring work of different kinds around the country in different ways and to different people. So it's very much about that uh, almost Tetris of different types of tours going to different places and us hopefully fitting that together um, in such a way that makes a variety of stuff available to a variety of people. Um, so yeah, we consider artistic excellence, of course, but we also consider where the tour is going, who you're working with, 
and who you are looking to reach and how you're going to reach them. So that audience and public engagement piece is also very important here. In most cases, the thing that might be toured is something that has already been produced and well received. That is in particular to do with theatre, dance, opera, those kinds of productions that are more complex and involved. But there are exceptions. So we are aware that it is not necessarily the way that you operate in music, traditional arts, visual arts to have made the thing and presented the thing and then come to us looking to tour it. You might do that all in one and we do acknowledge that. So in terms of the art form you're working in, take a close look at the art form specific guidelines at the end of the guidelines document, just so you're aware of those nuanced differences with regard to a work being made already or not, as well as other, other little things that the art form teams are kind of keen to keen to prioritize here. And then, as I mentioned very briefly before, it's also about who you work with. So successful tours um, kind of utilize or create networks of venues. You'll have to go to at least three venues in order to be funded through this scheme. And you might also be utilizing other partnerships and um, other organizations or promoters or funders in order to really make something robust, feasible um, and that can really enable a, a deep engagement with the public. So if those are the sorts of things that you are building and working on and preparing for this, you really shout about it in your application. It really helps us understand what you're doing and how you're doing it. On to the next slide. Thank you very much, Maureen. Um, to be aware, like any other Arts Council scheme, we fund this um, or or we structure and we structure and prioritize this scheme based around the priorities that we've created for ourselves in our 10-year strategy making great artwork. In particular, for touring, those are the priorities around the artist, around public engagement, and around um, spatial and demographics. And then there are other specific policies that have come out of that one across the organization that um, kind of have ramifications for this scheme as well. Um, so if it's something you can you can take a little look at, I would recommend taking a look at our spatial policy, which is all about ensuring that the arts, that artists and audiences thrive all around the country and not just in Dublin, etc. Take a look at our paying the artist policy. This is incredibly important in terms of ensuring that when you tour work, all of the artists involved are uh, are paid fairly. And we like to see that in your budget. And we also need to see that in your contingency plan. Our equality, diversity and inclusion policy um, really influences this scheme and all of our others. And then our EDI priorities are further strengthened by our children and young people's arts policy and our work in arts participation. So those are things that may or may not influence the particular work you're looking at here, but be conscious of it. And then there are art form policies and priorities. So as I've mentioned, there are art form specific priorities for touring within the guidelines documents. So make sure you're having a look at those. And then in the art form that you're working in here or working in in general, there are policies and priorities there. So it's it's helpful to be familiar with those and understand what your art form team is, is seeking to fund and why they're seeking to fund it. Something to make you aware of, it's not something you have to address very explicitly yet in the touring scheme, but the Arts Council will publish a climate action and environmental policy in 2024. We will do so once the Department of Culture has uh, published theirs. Our first priority there is to make our own organization a little bit more climate friendly, and we have actions around that. Our second priority is to support strategically funded organizations and art centers to do so. And then further down the line, we'll be looking at how the wider sector through our schemes, through our supports, through whatever else we've got going on, how we can how we can encourage that there. So, like I said, not something you have to address explicitly now. Bear in mind, it's going to come down the line. And listen, if this is something you're already concerned about, figuring out, working towards, and it's being taken into account in the planning of your tour, do tell us. Do tell us in your application, because that's really helpful for us to know. Um, 
Um, who can apply? Uh, you have to be resident in the Republic of Ireland. If you're not, you need to convince us in your proposal that what you're proposing benefits the arts in Ireland. So we're not closed off to it, but you do have to make a case there. You have to be a professional practicing artist. We acknowledge that that doesn't necessarily mean you earn a lot or earn regularly or earn continuously through through your practice, but you do need to identify yourself and be recognized as your peers as a professional practicing, art, practicing artist. We need uh, something of a track record demonstrated in the application. And then if you have been unsuccessful to strategic funding, art centre funding or partnership funding, you can apply to the touring scheme. On the converse, who cannot apply? So if you're in receipt of strategic art centre or partnership funding, you are not eligible to apply to this round of the touring scheme. If you do not have a demonstrable track record as an artist or as an arts organisation, if you are not based in the Republic of Ireland and cannot make that case that what you're proposing is going to benefit the arts in the Republic of Ireland, as mentioned before, paying the artists is supremely important. You have to guarantee payment to artists both in your original plan and in your contingency plan. If you don't do so, your uh, application will be ineligible. And then if you are an organisation directly funded by the Department of Culture, i.e. one of our national cultural institutions, you cannot apply to the touring scheme. What costs can you apply for? A lot of the costs that um, come directly out of touring are eligible here. Um, bear in mind that if you've got other incomes that might be funding from other funders or box office or anything like that, that has to that has to come out. It's um it's the costs that are left over once you account for that that we will cover. In particular, wages and fees for your artists and other staff, anyone who's essential to the delivery of the tour, we can cover their payments. Any admin related to the tour, any equipment or uh, venue hire required for the tour, marketing, PR and public engagement costs. As I've said, public engagement is really important here. Who are you looking to reach with your tour and how are you going to reach them? If that means spending some money, that means spending some money, include it in your budget. The kind of the rudimentaries of a tour, accommodation, travel and per diems. They should be in there and we can cover them. Access costs we can cover, and I'll actually deal with that separately in a little more detail in a minute. In the case of you touring something that has already been produced, we acknowledge that remounting and re-rehearsing costs money, and this can be included in your application. And in those touring models where you're making it new, we can include um the costs of making it new and developing it in order to bring it on the road. Um, and if anyone needs clarity around who, who needs to do one and who needs to do the other, we can discuss that at the end. The things you can't uh, apply for. Um, so if you've already made the thing and that's the model you're working towards, we cannot pay for initial production costs. You are welcome to tour this work to other countries or to Northern Ireland, but we will not cover those direct costs. Only the costs relating to touring within the Republic of Ireland can be covered by this grant. We can't cover major capital costs, not with this, not with anything from the Arts Council. We cannot cover your ongoing core costs unless they are very directly related and proportionate to your proposed tour. We can't cost something that doesn't or we can't fund something that doesn't fit this scheme or that fits another scheme of ours better. We can't fund something that has that already starts before January 2025. We can't cover anything that is um, that is going to make you money for something else. Charity fundraising, participation in a competition or primarily profit making purposes. We can't fund it if it's being funded somehow or somewhere else. And then we can't fund it if it has already been assessed by the Arts Council. Now, ex an exception to this is that if you've significantly developed the proposal since initially unsuccessfully applying. In that case, I recommend you come to us, the touring team, and you come to your art form team and tell us what you applied with before and where it's at now. And we can advise as to whether you should apply or not. 
But please note that that advice is not a guarantee you're being funded. It's rather it's advice that, yes, we are happy to assess this again. We are happy to assess it in its new form or its developed form. Um, in terms of your overall budget, this is not a scheme where we set an upper limit. So apply for what you need. And it's a scheme where we do endeavor to give you what you ask for if we're going to fund you. But we do reserve the right to do differently if that is what our resources require or if that's what we feel we need to do in order to ensure that lovely mix of different kinds of art in different forms going to different places to different people. And um, so bear that in mind. No upper limit on what you can apply for. We do try to give you what you ask for if successful, but we may require you to scale down um, depending on our resources. And then access costs. We treat access costs separate, separately. And the reason for that is that if ever you are making a decision around scaling down or rebudgeting, or we didn't give you what you asked for, or costs have increased, or the circumstances have changed, we give you access costs separately so that you can keep them ring fenced, so that your access costs do not have to be sliced and diced because that is required by the resources we've given you or something like that. So we also we always keep access costs separate. What we mean when we say access costs are the costs specifically relating to the making of work by artists or participants with disabilities and or non-capital public public access costs. So the the interventions that you might need in order to enable a broad this might be audio description or interpretation might be touch tours or things like that um, in order for your audience to access the work. Uh, now, bear with me just a second because I am having a slight issue with my VPN and I want to rectify it before I disappear from you. We can still see and hear you anyway. Okay, <laughs> at least for now. Um, so allow me to just... Type away at passwords and codes. And hopefully we're still OK. Yeah. In terms of identifying and sharing with us those access costs, you include them in your main budget, but make them clear that they are your access costs. And you also provide us a separate document outlining what they are and why you need them. Um, and that way we can understand it in the context of your total ask and we can understand it separately so that if we fund you, we can give you all of that and we can keep that access. You can keep those access costs ring fenced throughout the course of the tour. Um, OK, I'm going to pass over to Moran and Moran is going to tell you about some of the practicalities around preparing and submitting your application. Thanks, Aideen. Um, so I'll just highlight the guidelines, um, which will be a really important point of reference to you all when it comes to actually applying um, for the Touring of Work scheme. It can be found on our homepage. So if you go to the drop down menu under funding, you'll click into available funding. Um, you won't have to scroll too far. Touring of Work should be up at the top. Um, we're still accepting applications. And just a reminder, the deadline is the 9th of May. So you'll click into accepting applications, which will bring you to the Touring of Work scheme homepage. Um, here, this will give you a bit of an overview of the actual scheme itself. So we have, again, the closing date maximum awarded, which is, again, unlimited. Our forms, our practices, contact details. And to the right of that, you'll see a grey box um, which contains kind of important files and templates. So we do have the Touring of Work guidelines, um, which is a PDF that you can download and read through. And we'd highly recommend you consult these before you submit your application, read and reread. Um, we have our supporting material templates here. So you, you need to fill out a memorandum of understanding. And um, we have the template there to download. That is a Word document. And we have two Excel spreadsheets um, for the opera and theatre touring budget templates. You can also apply through that green button as well. 
Um, so just move on to the next slide. This is what the front page of the touring um, guidelines looks like. So again, please read these before you apply. It will be divided into four main sections. So we have about the award, which Aideen has kind of run through already about what you can apply for and who can apply. We also have a section on how to make your application, which I'm going to run through in the next few slides as well. Um, in section three, we have how the Arts Council processes and assesses your application once it comes through. And then finally, we have a touring appendix. So this will detail the priorities and objectives of the individual art form and art practice areas. So first and foremost, you will need to register if you haven't already with your, our online services portal, so OLS, as we do not accept hard copies or anything submitted by post fax or email or even delivered by hand. So everything needs to be uploaded through your portal on OLS. If you haven't signed up, um, please do so because uh, it will take a bit of time within five working days. You should receive your AORN and password, so your artist reference number. Um, if you have any need or you know issues with accessing OLS, please contact online services at artscouncil.ie or the following numbers 01618-0200 or 01618-0243. Unfortunately, the arts teams don't actually have any access to the back end of OLS, so there's very little we can do to help you if there's technical issues. So I'd really recommend you get through to this email or contact number if you're having issues. So in terms of the application process, you can download your application form on OLS. Um, this will need to be done using Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel or OpenOffice Writer or OpenOffice Calcon. And then, as I said, it will be uploaded onto online services. So you will log into online services to begin and you will click make an application. On the making application screen, you'll select your primary contact and click next. You'll come to the screen, making an application, choosing a funding program. You'll need to, in section A, from the funding dropdown list, select your funding program and then fill in your reference field. So this will be a unique reference to your application to help identify you. In section B, you'll click the buttons to download the guidance notes and application form if you haven't done so already. Um, further information can be found in our touring guidelines in page on pages 16 to 20 as well. I'll go into greater detail. But if you do have any issues filling this out, just contact us again. Um, you can contact me at marin.walsh at artscouncil.ie. And then in terms of the application form, once this is downloaded, you'll need to complete it. It's again separated into four main sections. You'll have your general details. So I've just listed a few examples. You'll need to fill in your name, your ARN and your art, art form or art practice area. There's a few more bits to be filled out here as well. You'll need to go into detail into your proposal then. You know, you'll have the title of your tour. You'll have your details and summary. You'll have pay conditions. You will need to list your venues. These need to be confirmed. So you'll have your dates and locations here as well. And then number of um, performances you think you'll be putting on. And you will be able to list out any collaborators that will be working with you, whether they're artists or uh, organizations um, that will be working with you on your tour. Third section then comes to expenditure, income and the amount requested. Um, and this will in include, again, access costs if you require them. And then finally, your supporting documentation. And this will be a checklist so you can tick off as you go through that you've you know, included your application form and your supporting documents. So I'll move on to the next slide, um, which is your supporting material, which will be separate to your application form. So first and foremost, you will need to provide a memorandum of understanding. There's only one exception to this, and that's if you are putting on a theatre tour. Um, you will need to, not need to fill this out, but I will come to that in a few minutes. So everyone else will need to fill out an MOU, as it's called, for each of your partner organisations um, and make sure that this all of these um, MOUs are put together into one document. You can use the memorandum template that I just showed you there um, on the touring page of the website. So there is a template available for that and it will be need, will need to be signed by your partner organisations or venues. Um, I'll move on to the public engagement strategy then. This should be a minimum of three pages um, and it's also known as a mediation plan, audience plan or a PR and marketing plan. Um, whatever you want to call it, but it will give you give us an idea of what audience you wish, wish to reach on your tour, 
how and why you've identified this audience, how you intend to approach audience development. So there, we go into detail a little bit in the guidelines as well about increasing, deepening and diversifying your audience, so the audience development, um, and how you will ensure your audience knows about your tour um, and is encouraged to attend. You may wish to partner um, with your venues to do so through your marketing and PR, and then what tools or methods you intend to use. Um, the next thing you'll need to include, which is mandatory, is a contingency plan. Um, this will just outline any alter alternate uh, arrangements that need to, if, if an event happens that prevents you from touring, what will you have in place that um, will include hopefully a guarantee that commits to art, that artists will be met so in terms of paying the artist if um, events are cancelled. We have um, an evidence of track record is also mandatory. So this can include CVs, biographies and company profiles of any of the key artistic personnel. Um, and um, we also would ask that this is completed in one document for submission and it's a max two pages. Finally, we would ask you to submit samples of work. Um, as you can see here, we have for theatre, dance, opera, circus and street arts, you are asked to provide evidence of how the proposed work was previously received via reviews or box off office information. When it comes to actually submitting the files, um, we do have information in our guidelines about the format and naming of visual stills, moving image work, music or sound recordings, samples of writing and references to public domain or published work and URLs, URL links. So they are all in the guidelines for you to reference. And then this, this slide is just going to reference the mandatory material that are required in certain circumstances. So as I mentioned previously, for opera tours, you will need to complete and submit an opera touring budget template. This is found on our touring webpage. MOUs are not mandatory for theatre tours. Instead, applicants must complete both tabs of the theatre touring budget template. Again, this is found on the um, touring of work webpage. Um, any applications requiring access costs, you will need to provide a document outlining these costs and how they've been arrived at, so the rationale. Um, so please be uh, please ensure to include this as the additional amount in, as part of your budget, and this will be in the application form as well. If you are working with children and young people under the age of 18, um, you will need to indicate this in section one of the application form. If your um, application is successful, you'll need to complete uh, the Arts Council's Child Protection and Welfare Quality Assurance Self Audit. Similarly, in section one, if you indicate you will be working with vulnerable adults, if you are successful, you will need to you will be required to adhere to the national policy and procedures on safeguarding vulnerable adult, uh, persons at risk of abuse. If your proposal involves working with animals, you must provide a copy of animal welfare protection policies and procedures. And then to finish out all Supporting documents um, must be submitted online as well, and they'll be uploaded on OLS as no hard copies will be accepted. If you do not submit the mandatory supporting material, your application will be deemed ineligible. So make sure that you use the application form at the very end. There is a checklist and you can tick off. Make sure you have everything um, uploaded. Um, so just move on to the next slide then. Um, in terms of the application process, following receipt of everyone's application forms before the closing deadline, the assessment process will follow as uh, will follow as such. Um, you'll receive two emails. The first is to acknowledge that your application has been received, and the second is to provide your application number. And um, this will begin with an A and then be about six digits afterwards. If you don't receive this email with your application number, please contact online services at artscouncil.ie. Your application will then be checked for eligibility just to make sure you've filled out your application form and that all mandatory documents have been um, included in your application. Our advisors and staff will assess and score your application and associated materials based on our criteria and our priorities and objectives as set out in guideline as set out in the guidelines section 3.3. A joint assessment and internal moderation will take place between all of the relevant arts teams and the touring team, so the MDA team here. Um, our staff will recommend whether an application is shortlisted or not shortlisted, and these shortlisted applications will go to an external peer panel. They will review all shortlisted applications and associated materials. They will determine the final score and make the final decisions. 
we will then communicate in writing the decisions to applicants and the decisions will be noted by our council. So in terms of assessment, um, there are four main criteria that you will be judged upon. Your artistic merit and whether your proposal delivers on the artistics, uh, on the Arts Council's core priority of artistic excellence. Uh, the second one is public engagement. Um, to what extent your proposal delivers on our core priority of public engagement. Then the strategic objectives and priorities, which are all outlined in our guidelines um, and whether you can deliver on our core priorities of the artist and uh, public engagement and as well as our um, strategic objectives within the Arts Council. And then finally, feasibility, to what extent uh, do your, does your application demonstrate capacity to deliver the proposed activity? Um, we will assess based on the information provided by you throughout your application form and in the mandatory supporting documents. Um, just to note that the deadline for this um, touring of work scheme is 5.30 on Thursday, the 9th of May, 2024. Uh, the Arts Council expects to inform applicants of all final decisions by the end of August, 2024. And then just some general advice and contact uh, details. Please allow plenty of time and ideally submit 48 hours in advance of the deadline. And um, this gives us, you know, if you're having technical uh, difficulties, this gives us more time to be able to help you. So please read the latest guidelines very carefully and pay attention to any must or requirements that you'll need to provide. Uh, please be sure that you are clear, that you understand eligibility criteria, scoring process, the weighting for assessment criteria, etc. And then can you seek advice or an outside eye or someone who can proofread your proposal who's not involved in um, the application. It just gives that kind of second perspective. Um, maybe there are things you've missed uh, or left out even. Um, so if you have any queries regarding eligibility or the technical aspects of your application, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, my contact details are 087-794-1044 um, by phone and then by email it's murren.walsh at artscouncil.ie. So that concludes um, our presentation. We do have some FAQs as well, so we might jump into those if that's okay, and then we can open up the floor um, to any questions from attendees. So I'll run through these if, if that's okay, Aideen. Is that okay? Yeah, great. Um, so these are just kind of the frequently asked questions we've received, and we just thought we'd jump into it in case um, it's something that's on your mind. So can I make more than one application? i.e. to the same scheme, i.e. the touring of work scheme, but to different art form or art practice areas? And the answer to that is no, you may only be the lead applicant on one application per scheme. Our tour starts earlier than 2025, can we still apply for this scheme? No, the scheme only funds tours that takes place between January and December 2025 and no earlier than that. Is there a minimum number of partners or venues required? Yes, um, your tour must take place to a minimum of three venues. Um, can we apply with a proposal for the same work that was previously um, unsuccessful? So as mentioned by Aideen a little bit earlier, activities that have been assessed by the Arts Council will not be eligible unless you can demonstrate that you have significantly developed your proposal since applying. But bear in mind, this is not an indication of a successful outcome. It's just that you are welcome to apply. Can we apply for touring of work that takes in place in, Nor in Northern Ireland or abroad? Um, and the answer to that is no. Um, in terms of Northern Ireland, you may wish to contact um, the Arts Council of Northern Ireland. In relation to funding, you're welcome to go on tour as part of this, but we just won't be funding it. And then in terms of touring abroad, you may wish to contact Culture Ireland in relation to funding activities um, internationally. Um, can we apply for touring funding if we're not based in the Republic of Ireland? Again, you won't be eligible if you're not based or resident in the Republic of Ireland. However, we do have a caveat that if you can demonstrate that your application will benefit the arts of Ar arts in Ireland, then you are welcome to apply. Um, then will there be a another round of funding announced for 2025-2026? This hasn't been quite updated um, as we've just received news. Um, that there will be a second round for 2025 and 2026. 